weather really did take a turn south, that's for sure. It was like 91 yesterday, and I woke up this morning, it was 56, and I think, I'm not positive, but I think tonight it's supposed to go down to 39. Ridiculous. We do a little bit of spraying this morning. I got this one field to finish up, and then we're done until the next round. Um, pretty chilly in the morning, and the wind is pretty calm, so it should be, should work pretty well. Well, the first round of spraying went all right. Um, a little snafu, I guess. Uh, without any of the gauges working, we did, Gary did put that gauge on the boot, center boom. But um, at some point, th there's a switch in there that sticks for the center boom. So I was spraying, I looked back and there was no pressure. And I'm not really sure how long it wasn't spraying. There's gonna be a path, the width of the sprayer out there where it's weedy somewhere, but we don't, we don't know where it's gonna be. Hopefully I have enough water in here. My God, it feels like winter's back. I woke up this morning, it's 49 degrees. Today is cemetery cleanup day. Uh, our family has been taking care of our rural cemetery for decades. It's my grandfather and probably everyone before him. And now it's down to our generation. And so the day before, the day before, the weekend before Memorial Day weekend, we always go up, out there and, I don't know, trim bushes, uh, pull weeds, just clean it up a little bit. There's, a, there's some people that do mow it and take care of it. But, you know, they just do the, the basics. We go around and kind of tidy it up before everybody comes out to pay their respects to their loved ones, I guess. But, I don't know, we just spend a couple hours and a bunch of us to go out there and start trimming and cleaning. Somehow it seems like every time we do this, it's cold out. Man, there is definitely a skunk living in this shed somewhere. Somewhere on all those tires, there is definitely a skunk. I suppose we're probably just feeding a skunk in there, but it's supposed to be for the stray cat, that fluffy one that liked to watch me. Hello, kitty. back at it for a new week it's pretty cold this weekend and it's gonna be cold and rainy the, mo the beginning of this week so we're gonna try and get Gary finished up he's got just a little bit left since the planter has been sitting it's of course got that tire low so we're gonna fill them up it's a pretty nice morning though overall this morning I think it's only about 55 but I think our high is going to be 60 it's pretty cloudy obviously It'd be really nice if we can get the corn done I'll probably have two or three days of kind of crappy rain weather where we won't be able to plant and then um we'll probably start on start in on soybeans maybe two days three days maybe depending on how much rain we get but i think we're gonna get enough that it's gonna shut us down well, gary's got just a little bit here i don't know how much but like maybe just one pass where he's gonna kind of mud some in here a little bit. This side of the field will be done. But those trees are kind of, the short ones are sticking up. It's really watery and you can't get the planter across there. So we have to fold it up, take it back into the yard at the, at the house and unfold it there just to do that little piece. It takes about five minutes, but that's just kind of how we have to do it. Somewhere over there, over by that little bunch of willows popping up there in the ditch, I heard a pheasant crow. You hear pheasants crowing around here every morning, but you never really see them. And then we walk over there and see if we can stir one up. God, this needs to be mowed again already.
you know, some sort of wild grape growing here. It looks like it. When I was a kid, my grandmother always used to have know about all the wild grapes that grew around in different areas and where they were at. And all the ladies in their, her little group, if they knew where there were some, they'd hide it from the other ones. So this little bit here, right behind the barn and down by the sweet corn patch, will be the last of the, that'll be the last of the corn that we need to plant. Normally we plant this in here, and I think I said earlier in the year that we probably weren't going to. But I think he, we're still probably gonna put 12 rows or something in here. It used to be a cattle lot for years ago, and the soil in here isn't very good. Um, you'd think it would be, but I think he brought a bunch of clay in from somewhere else to level it out years ago. Here's the sweet corn report, I guess. <laughs> but they're coming in. There are deer walking through here. So yeah, now you can now you can definitely row the sweet corn. It looks like there was a little bit of a debacle up here with the with the corn. I don't know if that's sweet corn or if we tilled in a a broken up ear of corn or we spilled some or what, but <laughs> that's, that's a mess. Well, while he's planting the rest of that field and finishing up, I take this tractor and go over and pick up some um, some wood that we had dropped on the perimeter of the field over there for firewood. It's been curing for a couple of years and if I don't get it now, then it'll be planted and I'll have to run down the crop. So this would be a good time to do it. problem is usually what we do is cut them into three or four foot lengths and stack them up, let them dry, come out and pick them up later. But depending on the season, what piece of equipment is hooked up to what tractor and how the fields are growing, sometimes you don't just don't get back to them and then you end up with kind of wasted wood. I guess it's not wasted wood, it's still habitat for something, probably a skunk or something, but it's just, uh, you can't always get back here and, and get all the stuff you cut up until it's too late and not in good shape anymore. Wow, check out this vine. There, there's the start of it. Right there. Goes all the way around. Under that stuff there. Up the tree. And right up in there somewhere. Right there about there. And that splits off all over in that tree. So here's more of that stuff. I don't really know what it is. Can look it up, I suppose. It looks like it's dead, but it is definitely still alive. All the way up to the top of that tree. This tree's kind of gotten overrun with it. Should make something with those old vines. Probably could do some pretty cool old timey, folksy, hippie artwork or something with it. These two aren't related, but they have the exact same markings and one's fuzzy and one's not. Look how dirty you are, buddy. You're not supposed to be, you're, you're an indoor kitty. Look how dirty you are. Well, corn planting is officially done. So now we need to uh, get the planter here in the shed. We're gonna take all the boxes off and set them up for beans. Apparently row number five is still acting up. So I think before we put the new boxes on, I'm just gonna pull that seed tube out and we're probably gonna have to switch the sensor. You can always tell when they go by, they uh, make more noise than the average planes that fly out here in the middle of nowhere. So, I don't know, whenever I hear one rumbling by, they go by fairly often. So I guess that one was Gordo 14. I think I have a video of it going over us from a couple years back too, like a short video, I think. So here's the leftover corn and we're just going to put it back in these 
bags. So here's the difference kind of between the two boxes we have. Um, this one here is a corn box, which you probably know plenty about by now from watching videos I've done. Um, this one is the bean box. So we have a plate that we'll put on here um, and it'll kind of rash or distribute evenly individual soybeans. And they're treated with a, a, a pesticide. And so um, as this spins around, this kind of brushes, make sure they don't stick together and it'll end up going down and falling down this tube. We're looking at it upside down right now. It'll end up coming out that tube as opposed to coming out this one where it's on a little belt that kind of distributes them. But they are a little bit taller because we're going to use a lot more seeds and that makes it difficult when you put them on here. This side when it's folded up is not, folded up is not bad but they're so tall on this side you can't really get them locked in because of these tanks in the way. And these tanks we don't use for anything. In fact, um, I believe, yeah, they're cracked even. There's, they're not even good for anything anymore. But if we take them off, then we have to find a place to put them and they're not hurting anything. So they're just on there. They're actually not being used for anything. But they do make it kind of a pain in the butt. Now usually before we put the bean plates on, we'll go around and make sure all these brushes are in decent shape. Um, these we just did last year, I think. And they count, they wear and they'll get a little bit short, but these are all, you know, pretty decent. So they're not, not really concerned about it. Make sure we got the right ones. Regular soybeans, as opposed to large soybeans, in case you were wondering. So, as these go around, pick up the seed, they'll drop it out there, it'll fall down through that seed tube. And uh, to get this to turn, I guess I don't know if I've ever even set, shown that. I don't know how well you will see this, but as this spins around, it has, it has this channel in here. I can release that. It locks into place. Now, when we engage this chain here, this gear, that'll start to spin and dispense the seeds. Trying to demonstrate a lot of this equipment, um, it's kind of hard to do because you, you can't really see the whole procedure and you can't be inside the machine when it's working. You almost need like computer graphics or something, but hopefully you can understand what I'm saying here.